The Mary Tyler Moore Show, branching out by Barry Brensel. Act One, Fade In. Autumn in Minneapolis. Interior, Mary's apartment, day. Mary is near her writing desk, measuring a spot to hang a new painting. A knock on the door. Phyllis's trademark, you who greeting. She opens the door and peeks in. You, Mary! Yeah, Phil, come on in. Mary, do you have any chance for shoebox? Mary stays focused on her task. But there should be one or two in the closet. Oh, Mary, you're a lifesaver. Because of a shoebox? Not just a shoebox, Mary. A diorama. A mini stage that will showcase a slice of American history. A glimpse at one of the many moments that made this country so great. And all these years, I've been throwing them out. Suddenly, I feel like Benedict Arnold. Phyllis rummages around in the closet. Guess I'll have to repatriate myself the next time there's a big sale. Mary laughs at her joke. She puts down her tape measure and pencil and meets Phyllis as she exits the closet with the box. Oh, Mary, your singular limited vision is so very charming. So very you. Mary shrugs. Phyllis holds up the shoebox. It's for Bess's social studies class. Our project, her project, will depict a scene from the Great Depression. Now all I need are a tiny ball gown and tuxedo that I can fit into some tour soldiers. How does that depict the Depression, exactly? Oh, uh, this won't be a literal representation. No, what I, what Bess wants to show is not the state of despair people were in, but rather what they could have achieved had they not simply thrown up their hands and given up. I'm not a history teacher, but I don't think that that's... That's right, Mary. You aren't a teacher. We should leave it at that. Mary registers her Mary S. polite annoyance. I firmly believe that no matter what his or her social status, anyone can elevate him or herself to a higher level of being. Rhoda comes into the apartment. Hey, a man! Oh. Rhoda and Phyllis glare at each other. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. That's what I love about you, Phyllis. It's never just hello or goodbye with you. It's always some catchy saying, some witty turn of phrase, a tongue twister, or a haunting little nursery rhyme. You're like a walking, talking Encyclopedia Britannica without the leathery sheen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the diorama, Mary. I'm off to help shape young minds. Phyllis exits. Why is it whenever she leaves the room, I see green skin and orange smoke? Mary good-naturedly waves away Rhoda's comedy. I don't want to inter interrupt whatever it is you're doing. Oh, but you're not interrupting. You just interrupted. Mary puts a finger to her lips and mouths sorry. So, do I look any different? Mary looks her over. Well, I feel like I should say yes, but I don't really see anything different. But if I say no, then you'll probably... It was a yes or no question, Mayor. You're starting to sound like the Encyclopedia Philatanica. The correct answer is yes. Yes, there is something different. Rhoda twirls around. You are looking at the Hempel Catalog Department's new creative director. Rhoda, that's terrific! Yeah, kid, can you believe it? Me! Now, instead of dressing mannequins all day, I get to dress real, living, breathing people. Undress in some cases if I play my cards right. Rhoda! But wow, that's just. terrific? Terrific! Mary starts toward the kitchen. Can I get you some coffee? I'd offer champagne, but I'm fresh out, I think. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's really exciting, you know? I've got some great ideas. I want to shake things up a little, move things out of the studio. I mean, I want to show the fashions on people in a real world setting. Mary starts the coffee preparation. That's a great idea. Yeah. Rhoda is smiling, but under her smile there is something waiting to get out. So when do you start? First thing Monday. Since the old director quit on Friday, they don't want me to step right in. There was one other candidate for the job, but his prison sentence got in the way of his interview. Oh. Well, I'm so proud of you. Thanks. And if you need any... I'm glad you asked. Mary looks surprised. I had this notion last night. What if, you know, for the section on workplace fashion, I had the models in a real workplace? Like, for example... A Minneapolis TV newsroom. The realization sweeps over Mary. Oh, no. Oh, Rhoda, I couldn't. I mean, I just, I don't think it, it's just, Mr. Grant would never. That's the beauty of Mayor. We wouldn't even have to involve Lou. We could set up early in the morning before anyone gets there, take a few pictures, and be on our way. Rhoda, I couldn't let something like that happen without asking Mr. Mr. Grant. Could you? What? Ask him. I mean, I'd do it myself, but if he said no to my face, I might blow up. The same way I used to blow up at my mother whenever she refused to see what was in my best interest. I don't want to blow up at your boss, Mary. I wouldn't feel right. Mary's voice is a combination of caring and cringing. Oh, Rhoda. I know I'd do the same for you. Mary hesitantly gives in. Oh, Rhoda. Okay, I'll ask. 
but I can't promise anything. If Mr. Grant says no... If he says no, I'll tell him what a lousy mother he is. Rhoda raises her hand and mouths, kidding, kidding. Resolve to interior newsroom day. Murray is at his desk typing. Ted strolls in, examining two travel brochures. Say, Murr, what sounds better to you? The beach where I'll be elbow to elbow with bikini clad chicks, or the majestic mountains where it will just be me and Mother Nature. Either way, the women lose out. Mary enters. Hi, guys. Morning, Mary. Mary, I was just trying to figure out where to go on my vacation. You never take vacation, Ted. It never hurts to look. Tell that, tell that to the three people who tune into your show. Ted grabs the nexus. How was your weekend? Mary puts away her purse, but her eyes are glazed over. She's in another world. Mary? Huh? You seem distracted. Is anything wrong? Mary glances at Lou's office door, then straight ahead, then gives Murray a side glance. Oh, Murr. Isn't it amazing how sometimes just a few words can change your whole weekend, your whole week, your whole month? I know what you mean. Marie did that to me once. There I am, trying to figure out which horse to put $20 on. Two words later, that 20 was going into my oldest daughter's college fund. The good news is, after all these years, there's now $21.50 in that account. Mary manages a faint smile. I just have to get it over with, that's all. Mary stands. She talks not really to Murray, but past him. I hate the position Rhoda put me in. But aren't we a team around here? Don't we all know each other well enough that we can lend a hand now and then? Is it such a big deal? Can Mr. Grant really be that unreasonable that he... To Mary, determined. Murray. I'm going in there. I don't know what it is you're going to do, but good luck. I don't know what I'm doing either, but thanks. She knocks on Lou's door. Come in. Mary pokes her head in. Mr. Grant, can I speak to you for a minute? Lewis slouched over his desk, studying mountains of paper. You've got 30 seconds. Mary sits down. Mr. Grant, I know you're terribly busy at the moment, and that this is a newsroom, and the priority of a newsroom is to deliver the news to... Mary, clients. you're wasting time. Get to the point. Well, Mr. Grant, you see, Ma Rhoda... Mary, let me stop you right there. I'm up to my eyeballs in work. Work related to the operation of this newsroom. Now, when you come in here and mention that name, Rhoda, that doesn't sound related to the news now, does it? Ordinarily, no, but in this case, I... Mary, I have deadlines. We have deadlines. Mary stares with her mouth open. She chickens out. She stands up. You're right. You're absolutely right, Mr. Grant. I'm just going to go back out there to my desk and work. Work. Good. You do that. Mary starts to exit. And Mary... She turns. The next time your instinct tells you that you're coming into my office at a lousy time for a lousy reason, trust your gut. Mary sheepishly exits. How'd it go? It didn't. Now can you share with me what this is all about? Mary turns to look at Murray. Well, Rhoda! Rhoda comes through the door. Rhoda gives Mary an I'm so sorry gesture as behind her two models, Hans and Sophie, a photographer and a lighting director come into the newsroom. Mary stands up in a panic. Sorry, you might say we're fashionably early. Rhoda laughs uncomfortably. Rhoda, what are you doing? Mayor, I couldn't wait. I really wanted to get this done and show it to Mr. Hempel. Can you believe this is all coming together? Mary watches in horror as the photographer motions people out of their desks and begin moving furniture around. No, I can't. And on Mary's look of horror, we fade out. And the back one. <clears throat> Act two. Fade in. Interior newsroom day. Mary is in a panic as Rhoda and her crew start to set up a fashion shoot in the newsroom. Mayor, I'm sorry. I know this is a surprise, but Hans is flying back to Finland tomorrow and he's the only one who can wear this suit. Hans is wearing a pink and blue plaid suit with a pink ascot and a blue fedora. He's the only one that should wear that suit. Rhoda, you can't do this. It'll only take 20 minutes, I promise. The photographer begins prancing around the room, taking down items from the bulletin board, moving the coat tree, etc. Sophie, sit on the edge of the desk. Pick up the telephone. Cross your ankle, Hans. I think you should be at the other end. The other desk. Feet up. One hand hovering over the typewriter. Hans takes out a pipe and lights it. Ted walks in. Hey, nice suit. Who's your tailor? Hans stares at Ted, rolls his eyes, and sits down. Ted walks over to Mary and Murray. What's his problem? Who is he anyway? I don't recognize him. I don't recognize any of these people. How long have they worked here? 
About ten seconds. Which is about all the time I have left. Rhoda races over to Mary. Doug Hempel is going to love this. Thanks so much for letting me do this, Mary. You're a real trooper. Rhoda, I'm not letting you do this. You just barged in here and... I'll make an uptake it, I promise. How are you going to make it up to me if I lose my job? Relax, will you, Mary? Lou comes out of his office. Hey, Mary, do you have the last repo... Uh... With his eyes bumped out, Lou looks around the room at the pandemonium. Oh, hey, Lou! Mary, can I see you in my office? You mean now? Right now? Right now. Mary. Um, yes, Mr. Grant, I guess now would be a good time. Lou motions Mary into his office. He glances over his shoulder one more time as the photographer continues to position Hans and Sophie and then snap pictures. Pipe smoke floats around the room. Before I throw all of these people out of my newsroom, would you care to explain what they're doing here in the first place? Well, Mr. Grant, you see, Rhoda. Oh, there's that name again. Rhoda was just promoted, you see, and she thought, well, she had this idea that if she used WJM as a background for some fashion catalog photos that her boss would think it was a terrific idea, which we, she and I, thought it was, that it was a really terrific idea. I don't think it's a really terrific idea, Mary. I think it stinks. This isn't a department store. When I want copy from Murray. I don't pay seven fifty and have a gift wrap for my wife's anniversary. I know, Mr. Grant. I don't take an elevator up to men's hats to ask you to do the program logs. No, no, you don't. And I don't walk into the film library and expect to see dummies modeling suits. Ted walks in. Lou, I don't know what's going on here, but I want to know why no one's taking my picture. Get out, Ted. Or someone's going to be taking a picture of your chalk outline. Ted looks over his clothes. What chalk outline? I just had this suit dry cleaned. Out, Ted. Everyone sure is in a grouchy mood today. Ted exits. Now, Mary, I'm going to give you the chance to ask your friend Rhoda to put all these desks back, usher all those people out, and to never set foot in my newsroom again. Fair enough. Well. Mr. Grant, I don't think banning Rhoda from the newsroom will... Either that crowd leaves your way, or they leave my way. Understand? Mary stands up. I'll take care of it. Good. Lou plops down into his chair. Mary turns back toward Lou before she opens the door. Mr. Grant... Your way, or my way, Mary... Mary turns away and exits Lou's office. The photo session is still in full swing. Rhoda? Not now, Mary. But Rhoda... Hey, I said not now. Mary gathers her courage. Yes, now, Rhoda. And all of you. This is a place of business. This is a professional, a well-respected... This isn't a house of fashion. Now everyone needs to leave. Pack up and leave. Rhoda walks over to Mary. Mary, what are you doing? I'm sorry, Rhoda, but I'm asking you to leave. Oh, we're almost done. I mean... Mary gathers every ounce of her own. Now, Rhoda. Rhoda is shocked. Hurt, dejected, embarrassed. Okay. Okay, right. You heard her? Everyone pack up, we're leaving. The photographer starts to protest, but Rhoda holds up her hands and motions everyone out. Rhoda looks over at Mary. Mary is tormented. Rhoda, I forget it, Mary. It doesn't matter. It's just a career. Rhoda leaves. Mary trudges over to her desk and slumps down in her chair. That took a lot of guts, Mary. I must have just enough guts left over because my stomach is in knots. It'll all blow over. I wish I could believe that. Mary looks over at the W.J. Endor. A pained expression sweeps over her face. Fade out. Interior Mary's apartment at night. Mary is working on her needlepoint. There is a knock on the door. Mary brightens, thinking it might be Rhoda. Coming! She walks to the door. She slowly opens it. Oh, hi, Bess. Hi, Aunt Mary. I brought back your shoebox. You didn't have to do that. It's okay. I failed my assignment anyway. Oh, Bess, I'm sorry to hear that. Phyllis says I should never have... I should fix blame on anyone. But it was kind of her fault. Her version of the Great Depression wasn't depressing enough. I don't really think they had fondue parties in the 1930s. Mary puts down the shoebox. I should have done it all on my own, but... You know, sometimes it's just easier to let Phyllis be Phyllis. Mm, but then sometimes you end up with a failing grade. Best shots. Yeah, but it made her feel kind of happy. Like, she
she was really making a difference. Deep down, she did it for me. Well then, I guess you learned something from the experience after all. That was Lear's explanation, anyway. Right before Phyllis affixed blame on him for being out late with his head nurse last night. There's an awkward silence. Well, I guess I better get back downstairs. Are you sure you can't stick around a while? It's a school night. Right, right. Thanks again for lending me your shoebox. Sorry you didn't get an A. Mary opens the door. Beth starts to exit. Oh, hey Aunt Rhoda. Rhoda is heading up the stairs with a bag of groceries in her arms. Hi, Bess. Hi, Rhoda. Hi, Mary. Are you two still mad at each other? Another awkward pause. Oh, well, Bess. Don't you tax your mind with our silly problems. Phyllis calls up from downstairs. Bess, don't dawdle up there. We still need to nip and tack your garden home outfit. Lord knows you've got problems enough of your own. Bess smiles. See Aunt Mary. See Aunt Rhoda. Night, Bess. Mary and Rhoda glance at each other. Well, I'd better go. Rhoda, would you like to come in? No, no, I, I don't want to cause any kind of disruption. Oh, Rhoda, come on. That is not fair. You put me in an awkward position. I would have pulled out all the stops for you, Mayor. If I knew something was that important to you, well, it doesn't matter anyway. They demoted me today. Oh, Rhoda. Seems like they love my ideas, but they hated the budget. I guess cardboard newsrooms are a lot cheaper than the real thing. The cardboard Ted Baxter sure is a better conversationalist. Listen, I know I put you in a tight spot, Mayor. I was just so determined to make a name for myself, you know? I really wanted to make a splash. I just didn't expect to dive in over my head. I know. And I could have fought harder for... Well, maybe not fought, or harder for that matter, but... I let Mr. Grant intimidate me, and, and you let me intimidate you too, a little. Well, yeah, I guess, a little. So I want to make it up to you. If you want to come down to the store sometime and, I don't know, interview the stock boys or customer service department, I'll arrange it. Maybe to make it more exciting, I can stage a mannequin brawl. <laughs> Very smart. Will you get in here on one condition? The next time I get a crazy idea, tell me I'm being crazy. Rhoda walks in. But I did have an idea about using real people in the window display this month. See, I want to do a Hall of Mirrors theme, and I need someone who doesn't mind sitting around all day staring at his reflection. So I thought, hey, Ted Baxter. Rhoda! Too crazy? <laughs> yes, too crazy, even for Ted. <laughs> Mary and Rhoda laugh and continue to talk as they head to the living room, and we fade out. End of Act 2. Ted, fade in, interior newsroom fade. Everyone is busy at their desk. The door opens and Rhoda walks in carrying a box of pledges. The three employees against the back wall spring out of their chairs, expecting to be shooed away and have their desk rearranged again. Relax, guys. I come in peace. Rhoda, what brings you here? Lou enters from the WJM doors. He stops dead when he sees Rhoda. Hi, Lou. Listen, I came to apologize for the other day. Rhoda reaches into the box and hands Lou a plan. It's my way of saying, I'm sorry. Lou takes the plan and stares at it, as though an alien life form has just been handed to him. Rhoda, this isn't necessary. It's the least I can do, you know, for all the trouble I caused. Besides, this office could use, could use some greening up. It's so drab in here. That's because 99% of the news is drab. Ted walks in on Murray's line. Thanks, sir. That's why you need ballots. Here you go, Ted. Rhoda hands Ted the plan. What's this? An English ivy. What am I supposed to do with it? Watch it grow, Ted. Sorry, Rhoda, but I can't sit around and wait for some dumb stump to... Make something of himself? His mother in the last five days said the same thing. I'll take Ted's plant. You, Mr. Grant? Sure. I know a little something about raising things. I have three well-adjusted kids to prove it. And if they start to take up space and get on my nerves, I'll kick them out. I like your style, Lou. That goes for you, too, Ted. Ted looks at his suit. Why, thanks. Look at it this way, Lou. If Ted is ever out sick, we can zoom in on the plant for an hour. I'm sure the audience will be just as stimulated. That didn't sound like a compliment, Trust me, it wasn't, Ted. Especially for the plant. Eight out. 